<laughs> I, I gotta tell you now, if you're expecting some serious button down, like really toit review of WrestleMania backlash, you're not gonna get it here. Nope, no, 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 that, that's not going to happen. You may find that you still enjoy this review, and that's why, if you haven't done so already, you should smash the subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter, but, oh boy, <laughs> I will do the best I can, but zombie lumberjacks. What else the hell are you going to do here? <laughs> Why the fuck could we just have a break out and do the thriller dance mid match? <laughs> all right, all right. God damn it, we're professionals here. WrestleMania Backlash. <laughs> Zombie Lumberjacks. <laughs> Oh, oh! <laughs> Why couldn't we just bring back the ghost of Dino Bravo? <laughs> a few packs of Marlboros, <laughs> a pistol, and say, "Go to town!" <laughs> bang, bang! He dead. Eighteen bullets in the head. <laughs> Anyways. We kicked off WrestleMania Backlash with the Raw Women's Championship Triple Threat. Because, of course, you couldn't just let Asuka and Rhea Ripley have their own thing one-on-one. -on -one. You gotta squeeze Charlotte in. Now, to be fair, unlike the other Triple Threat where they manufactured the story, this Triple Threat at least had some story, had some purpose for being. So I'm okay with that. The actual match itself was relatively good for a triple threat, which I hate triple threats as a general rule anyways. I just really hate the dynamics of them. I just think they're really stupid. I think it's lazy to write in a way and produce in a way and book in a way that puts you in these situations where you have to have triple threats. That said, I was okay with this one because it had storyline purpose. And I will say this, along with the match being good, the big kick for me was, of course, on a night filled of zombie lumberjacks, that zombie-looking bitch Charlotte said, I'm going to squeeze my way into this pay-per-view match, but I ain't doing the job, sister. <laughs> you take all the worst components of John Cena and Randy Orton, put it in a female body, allegedly, and what do you get? You get Charlotte Flair. Rhea Ripley retains Asuka Jobs. So you know it's going to be Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, which, let's be clear here, is the more interesting story because you can play off some stuff from last year, especially at WrestleMania, any damn ways. But it was a solid opener to this pay-per-view. It actually was. The SmackDown Tag Team Championships, father and son, the Mysterios, are victorious over the Dirty Dogs, Robert Root, and of course, <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. How the hell is 2021? And he's still with the major wrestling promotion, let alone working a pay-per-view. Let alone working a pay-per-view as a defending tag team champion is beyond all logic and reason to be. Solid tag team match, though. Mysterios get their big father-son moment because, again, why the fuck would you have done this at WrestleMania where it seemed to have made infinitely more sense? But let's be clear. They didn't give a shit, this company, because it was all about the next match. The Lumberjack match. Damian Priest versus The Miz. And everything you thought this might be in terms of Lumberjacks, where you even thought that that was even a weird stipulation to begin with. Oh, baby. <laughs> it's either one of two things. It's either, for those of you that have wondered for a decade plus on the interwebs about just how big Batista's dick is, if you want to say that he was responsible for the zombie lumberjacks, that tells you just how much swinging big dick energy that Dave Batista has.
said, I can't be there in person. I bet you can't be in person, Dave, because you don't want to be associated with this shit. Army of the dead by ass. <laughs> or, this was entirely and totally Vince's idea, Vince's creation, and that's every bit as logical, if not more so. You can sit, see, like them talking about Damian Priest versus The Miz. What stipulation do we maybe add to this match for WrestleMania Backlash? Vince says, well, let's take a page out of the big book of how not to put over a sponsor of the pay-per-view. I've got it. Lumberjacks. Zombies. Lumberjacks. Zombies. Zombies. Lumberjacks. Zombie. Lumberjacks. Zombie. Lumberjacks. By God, I've got it. Ha! <laughs> Ah. <laughs> you talk about the shit that sets wrestling back 30 years. If it's not the sparklers of doom or every time Cody Rhodes takes a fucking mic at this point. Ooh. <laughs> Zombie lumberjack. So here's my deal. Wrestling is supposed to be sensationalistic and stupid and crazy and off the wall and all that stuff. That's fine. My problem fundamentally is not with doing this lumberjack shit. It's not. It's the fact that it was so randomly thrown in there and so totally out of place. Like if they were associated with a character like The Fiend or The Undertaker or something like that. You would sit there and say, okay, you know what? Crazy off the wall, but if it it's the character, it has a purpose, it makes sense. This did none of that whatsoever. So it's completely and totally out of place. And between what happened in the match to John Morrison and The Miz, are they dead now? Are they going to be the walking dead now? Are they going to be fucking zombies on Raw Monday night? What the hell was with the man meat pile in the ring at the end when Miz is laying down on the ground? What the hell is that all about? This, this will be the one thing, though, that you'll never forget about this pay-per-view. If you watched it, you will always remember WrestleMania Backlash 2021, and you will say Zombie Lumberjacks, or somebody says Zombie Lumberjacks to you, you will always be transposed back into that time, just like the Sparklers of Doom. That's how horrendously awful, splendiferous, fantastic this was. You could have had him break out into the thriller dance. You couldn't have done more. Couldn't have had it as an excuse to bring the boogeyman in. Like, you know, any number of things you could have done here. Like, Damian Priest won the match. Like, even his whole finish at the end. This match was one big fucking movie trailer. <laughs> you guys gotta tell me, for those of you that actually legitimately watch both shows live and in real time, what's better, worse, more spectacular, more horrendous, however the hell you wanna put it? <laughs> the big, the big Ken Omega Sparklers of Doom? <laughs> or Zombie Lumberjacks? And you gotta think about it, put aside personal biases and just think like, we've gotten two all-time legendary botchamanian type shit moments in one year. Furthermore, in the first few months of the year, this year isn't even over yet. What the hell is going to happen when we actually eventually get people back in the arenas? Holy shit. Instead of this being a big crowning victory for Damian Priest, we're talking about zombie lumberjacks. The SmackDown Women's Championship. It's Bailey. it's Bianca Belair. Like, they had a decent match, but at this point in time, Bianca retains, yay! Zombie Lumberjacks, who gives a shit? <laughs> I'm not trying to dismiss the work that the ladies did, but... It took, really, until the main event of this show for me to kind of snap out of it, because I kept just thinking about and giggling about the fucking Zombie Lumberjacks! Like the WWE Championship Triple Threat Match. This shit was good. Drew McIntyre's performance in this match was outstanding. Like, I thought he really carried this. 
And not only was I still kind of sort of giggling about the zombie apocalypse and the zombie lumberjacks, but seeing Braun Strowman added to this match to be a big old monstrous 380-pound jobber bitch, like, <laughs> that made me laugh, too. <laughs> in an era and a place and a time where you got people that look like me or a dime a fucking dozen in that company, a big buffed up Care Bear looking motherfucker like Braun Strowman has been reduced to jobber bitch. <laughs> Zombie lumberjacks. And then we get to the main event, which by that point in time, I can stop thinking about zombie lumberjacks because it's time for the head of the table, our tribal chief, our universal champion, Roman Reigns, to defend his title against Cesaro. And this match was fantastic. Like, we get rid of the bullshit and everything when talking about this match. This match was fantastic. It was physical. It made both of these guys, in my opinion, look really good based off of the roles that they're portraying. Furthermore, this match actually told the story. Like Roman talking shit as he's working through the match, Cesaro with the injured arm, and working that throughout the match. Like they found a body part and they continue to work in the way they continue to incorporate it into the story. For those of you who might be pissed about how this match came across, shut up. For those of you that are pissed off about what well, they made Cesaro look stupid, Cesaro just got a main event fucking pay-per-view payout, you jackasses, shut up. Isn't this his first legit like pay-per-view world title opportunity? That motherfucker went out there and made the most of it. He looked great. He made his opponent, Roman Reigns, look great. Roman Reigns looked great. He made Cesaro work great. This is how it's supposed to go, fucking people. And of course, what added another layer to me about this was that Roman was able to do it without hard-headed Jay interfering and causing disruption or Jimmy going out there and fucking things up. Roman did it on his own, as you would expect, as he can, anytime he chooses. It was a fantastic main event match. There were a couple matches on this card that really delivered. And this was certainly one of them. Now, of course, Roman Reigns wins. You're not going to put the fucking title on Cesaro. No. He's the type of guy that if you ever were going to do that, it needs to be to take the belt off of a different champion, but you need to put a more well-crafted, better cultivated story in place. You just can't. But Cesaro in this role was absolutely perfect. And for those of you that are mad that, oh, after the match, they had Jey Uso beat him down. Okay, well, again, that's part of telling the story, damn it. And then you're mad because here comes Mr. Drip Drip, Seth Rollins' is rating slayer dumbass out, and he's going to sit there and womp up on and beat up on Cesaro. What the hell does that mean? I get what you're thinking a little bit about, hey, Vince McMahon said, oh, you want him to get a main event world title shot. For Cesaro, well, we'll give it to you, but it's going to be on my conditions. Yeah, it totally comes across that way. Like, he lost the match to Roman by being submitted. Then Jay whoops his ass, and then Seth Rollins whoops his ass to another degree. I get that. Like, it looks like that way. But then also think about it like this. He's coming off of one featured pay-per-view match where he was part of the main event. Now you're setting him up making him the focal point, Cesaro, at the end of the night, getting beat down or not. It's called getting heat, you fucking idiots. Now you're building up him and Rollins in a feature match for the next pay-per-view, Hell in a Cell. Like, why is that a bad thing? The last thing you're seeing is Cesaro. Yes, it's Cesaro getting beaten down, but it's still Cesaro. He's the one closing the show, not fucking Roman. Sometimes I hate when people say, oh, no matter what with wrestling fans, they'll never fucking be happy. You know what? Sometimes that's annoying and stupid and, of course, misplaced and out of context, but sometimes it's completely and totally valid. Like, you wanted him to get a main event shot, he got a main event shot. The motherfucker delivered. He absolutely delivered. Now it seems like he's being put in a position where he's going to be one of the featured acts at Hell in a Cell, and yet you're bitching about it. Shut up! Or else I'm going to send the zombie lumberjacks after you. But even in spite of all that, like in a few months, you might not remember much about Cesaro at this time. But the one thing you will always remember, you will always remember, 
which will make WrestleMania Backlash 2021 a show you will never forget is fucking zombie lumberjacks! <laughs>